In this tutorial, we're going to cover and look at a multipolar neuron. We're going to work through and identify all the structures as seen in this model. So we're going to start right here at the soma. We have this nice little clear ball. Uh, this is going to be our nucleus. Within the soma, we're going to have all these little blue speckles. These are modified endoplasmic reticulums. They are called nissel bodies. You can see the neural fibers extending into the dendrites. So again, our neural fibrils extending into the dendrites. We have a super important zone right here. This is known as our axon hillock. It is also our trigger zone. This is where we would start and initiate our all or none principle of our action potential. Remember that here in our soma, we're going to be utilizing graded potentials that would eventually sum to trigger our trigger zone right here, our axon hillock. I wanna pay note to these orangey peach colored synaptic end bulbs that are coming into this neuron. And a lot of people are confused here. They don't realize that at these dendrites, right? So these are our dendrites that we can have other neurons and specifically their synaptic end bulbs coming in and communicating with this. Now, again, there's three different ways that these synaptic end bulbs can come and touch and communicate with this soma, with this multipolar neuron. And we have the first being axodendritic, right? So the axon terminals, synaptic end bulbs of another axon can come and touch in at the, end, at the dendrite of this multipolar neuron, so it's axodendritic. We can also put that synaptic end bulb on the actual soma, so this would be axosomatic. And we can put this synaptic end bulb right here on the axon hillock, and that would give us the most ideal condition uh, for our graded potentials to generate an action potential, and this would give us an axo-axonic connection. Coming off the axon hillock, we have our dendrite, and we see it here extending through this portion of our axon. So again, our axon is gonna extend the length of this portion. We have this gray connective tissue. Remember the connective tissue that lines and encircles an entire axon, an entire multipolar neuron is called the endoneurium. Each little bean that we see here is going to be our Schwann cell. This is our nucleus of our Schwann cell. We know that the Schwann cell is insulating the axon, allowing for or protecting the integrity of this electrical signal, this action potential as it propagates down the length of the axon. It is made of fat. This would be the interior aspect, would be our myelin sheath. You can see some mitochondria here lying within and around the axon. This is gonna be important for our leak channels, our ATPase gated channels. That's gonna allow for once depolarized, then repolarized, and then again hyperpolarized, allow for this axon to come back to resting membrane potential at minus 70 millivolts. Where each Schwann cell meets, we're gonna have a little exposed axon. This is known as our node of Ranvier. So that concludes our tutorial on our multipolar neuron. I hope you enjoyed.